Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all having a fantastic Friday. It's that time of the week where I, Spanners Germ 669, hope to deliver another interesting review for you all. Now the film I'm going to be reviewing today is an American low-budget independent horror film. So it's one of the rare occasions where I'm not going to be reviewing a subtitled film. So for all of you subtitle haters, don't worry, this one will be for you. It's made in 2008, directed by David Gregory, and this film is called Plague Town. And the story is as follows. In a remote village, a shocking secret lives on with each and every baby that's born. Now for a group of lost tourists, every conception of family will soon be sliced to pieces. And for the mysterious young girl named Rosemary, the most depraved hunger of all is about to be fulfilled. So that's a pretty stupid sort of synopsis. It doesn't really tell you anything, so I'll give you a brief rundown. At the start of the film, we have a family. They're dysfunctional. They don't really get along with each other. There's got a lot of problems. They get off a bus, and they're visiting relatives in Ireland. So it's in the Irish countryside, and they realise that they're lost, um, and they're not supposed to have got off at that stop. So they're bickering away amongst each other, and the eldest daughter ends up going for a walk with someone that they've just met, who's tagged along, and he's an English guy who's a little bit of a pompous sort of prick. So they walk off together, and the rest of the family don't know where they're gone. So by the time the rest of the family track them down, the last bus into town has gone. So they have to walk down this dirt road, they're blaming each other for all the, the problems that they're in, and they come across this town, and this town isn't exactly what they'd hoped it'd be, and it turns out that the people inside this town are psychotic, and they have to fight for their lives if they are to get out of this ordeal alive. So that's as far as I'm going to go to synopsis. If you want to know more, I would highly recommend you go out there, seek the film out, and see for yourself how it unfolds. But that's your basic sort of synopsis. It's more a case of being there, done that, so it's nothing that you know you haven't seen before. But yeah, hopefully that synopsis has, has left a bit of um, curiosity and interest in you. So my thoughts on the film. Now, I'm not really a fan of American independent stuff. It really is a hit or miss. But I have uh, actually found that it, most of the independent stuff is better than mainstream horror. So I really wasn't going to get this one. I was looking through my local DVD store. I come across this one. It had an interesting sort of cover. But when I read the back, that sold me, and I'm sure it's going to sell a lot of people this film. Now, I'll read on the back exactly what it says. It says, A very scary experience. Just when you think you've seen all it has to offer, director David Gregory cranks up the terror even higher and brings the noise. It's the movie that Fright fans around the world have hailed as a new benchmark in independent horror. A boundary-pushing, taboo-breaking experience. Plague Town goes where most mainstream horror films fear to tread. One of the very few memorable horror flicks of the year. So that's a very good write-up, and it's enough to make anyone curious as to what it's going to be like. But I couldn't help but feel that this is a very overrated film. Now, it's not a, a, not a bad film, don't get me wrong, but by the write-ups, I was expecting something so much more. Now, I'll go through the good parts. The good parts are the atmosphere was perfect. I think David Gregory really nailed it. Apparently, this was shot in Massachusetts and supposed to be in Ireland. I don't know why he chose this, but I guess, I think Massachusetts has some Irish background. I could be wrong. I don't really know my American um, history very well. But it really did come across as authentic Irish. It was that dreary sort of countryside, the, the brick sort of um, walls. And, you know, you could be mistaken for believing it really is an island. So I thought the director did a good job in proving, in um, getting the scenery right for something that is supposed to be portrayed that way. So... You know, really, really good atmosphere. Most of the scary stuff happens at night, and the fog use was very, very good. I thought it created a mystery, sort of mysterious, dreamlike world and a nightmare, um, kind of like a, you know, it's just a nightmarish sort of situation. And the cottages that he had there were very good. And the whole thing, you know, it really did make you feel like you were, you were in a plague town. And that you know that while nothing bad's happening yet, you know that something really bad's going to happen, just down to the fact that the environment just feels really uncomfortable. So I really like the cinematography in this. It was very good for an independent filmmaker. I thought, you know, cinematography was perfect. The gore was good. Uh, there were one, uh, two scenes in particular that were very, very good. There's one involving a hubcap and the other one involving a hanging. Now, the hanging is the most memorable one out of the lot. I'm not going to give away what happens, but it will shock you. It shocked me. So I thought the gore for such an independent horror film, once again, it was pretty good. And it wasn't fake. Well, most of it wasn't fake. There was one or two scenes that looked a little bit fake. But, no, the gore really surprised me. And it is a shocking film. But if you're used to French horror 
or underground American horror, then this will be very tame. But if you're used to films like Nightmare on Elm Street, then this one will shock you because there are some really, really memorable scenes in it. Now, the acting was a little bit hit or miss. It didn't require a great performance, but some of it was unrealistic. But then other parts, you know, were fairly decent. So for an independent horror film, the acting was, I'll give it a passing mark. Uh, the ending was depressing, but I really would have gone a different angle. But having said that, it really doesn't leave you with the hope that a lot of mainstream Hollywood um, horror films do. So um, although I didn't really agree with the ending, I still thought it was better than most. So, you know, there is a lot to like about the film. I thought the soundtrack was very good as well. It created the, the scary atmosphere as well. So for an independent horror film, very good. But considering the write-up, I just felt that, you know, I was expecting a lot more. It really is a film that you, you know, it's not a film you haven't seen before. It says it's a benchmark. It's not a benchmark. I think that, you know, once again, if you're used to mainstream Hollywood horror films, then it will be a benchmark. But if you're used to the foreign stuff, then it is tame. And I can't help but feel that the director of this film was kind of overrating himself to sell. And it was all about money. No, forgive me if I'm wrong, but that's the way it came across to me because it really is not as good as the write-ups will say. It's not original. As I said, the story's been there, done before. If you've seen uh, films like Children of the Corn, uh, children are the centre stage to this film, the villains. And it really did, once again, another positive. It painted a re very real message. Some parents let their children do whatever they want, and they're just out of control. And this film is a very extreme example of that, but it did carry that uh, message. And I like those kind of films, horror films, that have a re very real message. And when you see the film, the parents think that the children can do no wrong. The children are doing wrong, but they're turning a blind eye. So a very, very real situation that you face in everyday life. So I really like that sort of aspect to it. But as I said, nothing you haven't seen before. The con um, continuity was a little bit off. I thought that when the, the good stuff started happening, it really wasn't that good. Uh, the pacing was okay, but uh, yeah, it's just some of the continuity, especially in the fight scenes, that were just a little bit off and took a little bit out of it for me. The makeup wasn't good. The children, they were supposed to look deformed, but it looked like they were just wearing masks. So I don't know why the director wanted the children to look like they did. I thought, you know, it just made it look like they were wearing masks. And they were supposed to look deformed, so it really didn't come across as very real. I really liked the, um, the bizarre sort of imagination to the lead sort of villain. He's got eyes on, the, on a cloth. You see the film and, you know, she's really, really bizarre and I thought that was a really good character to make. So, a lot to like about the film and I'm going to recommend it. And if you like independent horror films, um, then you're going to like this one. But just don't go in there expecting something that the write-ups will say it is because it really isn't taboo-breaking. If you want something taboo-breaking, watch Inside, which is a French horror film. This isn't really taboo-breaking. There are scenes involving children that were quite violent, so I guess that's... Um, taboo breaking maybe but you know it is pretty tame compared to a lot of hardcore sort of horror films but uh, I would recommend this over a lot of mainstream Hollywood horror films so um, that's my review of Plague Town directed by David Gregory in 2008 a, a good film but it's a film that is overrated so just be careful don't get suckered into buying it based on what is written on the back of this cover alright guys that's my review for this Friday until next Friday take care of yourselves keep watching horror and I'll see you later